Welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to begin our discussion of the Neopteran insects, starting with the Orthopteroid and Plecopteroid orders. At this point in our discussion, we're here at ring number four on this tree. That is, infraclass Neoptera. Neopteran insects are those which possess the musculature that allows them to fold their wings flat over their backs. We'll start our discussion of Neoptera here at ring five the orthopteroid orders. Later in this lecture, we'll talk about the orders at ring 6, the plecopteroid orders. To start, it should be noted that while these orders have historically been grouped together in the manner shown here, newer work has suggested that these likely don't represent monophyletic groups. This tree represents one hypothesis about the arrangement of these orders, and here is one other potential hypothesis, a slightly newer one. Uh, there are several others, but we are going to use the groups shown here, not because they're necessarily valid monophyletic groups, but because they're a convenient manner with which to discuss these orders. So, to start, the orthopteroid orders. And the first order that we're going to talk about is orthoptera or grasshoppers and their kin. And you've probably seen members of the order Orthoptera before. Uh, you're probably fairly familiar with this order. They're things such as grasshoppers and katydids or crickets. And the order Orthoptera, grasshoppers, crickets, and their kin, are typified by a couple of different characters. Um, first, most members of this order have two pairs of membranous wings that fold over their back. Um, in some groups, these wings are, are reduced or, or secondarily lost. Um, most members of this group have modified hind legs, and most of those are modified for jumping. Uh, usually this involves uh, a, a kind of expanded femur with, with more musculature for, for jumping. Um, Members of this uh, order have uh, an enlarged pronotum, and the pronotum is, is the dorsal or, or, or top, if you will, if you're looking down on the insect, uh, part of the thorax. Uh, and then they all have biting or chewing mouth parts, and they're hemimetabolous. They have um, hemimetabolous life cycle. And for reference, here is a smattering of different orthopterans. The next order we're going to talk about here is another fairly familiar one, Mantodia, or praying mantises. And the order Mantodia is characterized by a number of things as well. Uh, they have, like the orthopterans, two pairs of wings. Um, Usually, the, at least the front pair of these wings are somewhat leathery. Um, they also have what are called raptoral forelimbs, or these, these kind of grasping forelimbs that are typical of, of, of a praying mantis that you would think of a praying mantis of having. Um, they have large eyes, this is because they are, for the most part, visual predators, um, and their pronotum is, is more elongate. Uh, as you can see in the image here. They too have biting and chewing or chewing mouth parts, and they too are hemimetabolous. This, on the other hand, is not a mantis. This is actually a member of the order Neuroptera, which we'll talk about later, belonging to the family Mantispidae. The common name for this family is, somewhat unsurprisingly, mantis flies. These fellows do look a lot like mantises, but note that their wings are kind of thin and membranous and, and at least partially see-through and they're not at all leathery like in mantises. The next order we're going to talk about is Blatodia, and this includes the order, Is or former order, Isoptera, um, and that is cockroaches and termites, respectively. So the order Blatodia, or cockroaches, um, most of this order has two pairs of leathery wings. In some groups, these wings are secondarily lost. Uh, their pronotum generally forms kind of a shield-like structure that at least partially covers their head from above, uh, and the body is typically oval in shape, uh, though for these past 
two items. Um, the Infra Order Isoptera, or Termites, doesn't really fit the bill quite so much. We'll talk a little bit about them. Um, and they too, these two, Order Blattodia too, uh, has chewing mouth parts and are hemimetabolous. And we typically think of cockroaches as these, you know, brown winged things that kind of flit around our homes or apartments and, and cause havoc to us. Um, but when you get into the tropics, uh, you actually find a, a, a fair amount of diversity in cockroaches. Um, and, and there are a number of different forms and, and, and colors and whatnot. Things that mimic beetles or things that, that glow in the, uh, in the under black light or, or, or look more like isopods and stuff like that. So there's actually a lot of diversity in cockroaches, and, and they're actually a fairly understudied group. One of the more recent discoveries that we've made about the order Blatodia is that it encompasses more taxa than we originally thought. Termites, or Isoptera, were traditionally treated as an order and thought to be closely related to roaches, but not a part of that order. Um, we now realize, based on a combination of uh, genetic, behavioral, and morphological data, that this taxon is actually buried within the rest of the cockroaches. They're a sister taxa to a group called the wood roaches. Um, and that treating termites as an order of them, their own is not really that appropriate because it makes the rest of Blatodia uh, paraphyletic. We now actually treat this group... Uh, or Isoptera as, as a member of, or as, as a subset of uh, Latodia, despite their apparent differences in external morphology. The termites are social insects, like, like ants or, or like honeybees are. Um, social insects have a couple of important characters to talk about. Uh, all social insects live in colonies. They show cooperative care of the young. They show division of labor into reproductive and non-reproductive groups, or castes, um, and, and there is an overlap in generations within a single colony. Um, termites are generally... Um, the termites generally feed on uh, dead or decaying organic material, uh, and they all kind of look the same uh, with with these within you know a, a caste within a colony, there there are workers and soldiers and, and what are called allates or, or winged adults uh, that are that are the rep reproductives and then there's a queen and 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 there are some variations within this this infra order but but they all are very ant like almost and the fact that they do look rather ant like often leads to confusion between these two groups. So I've included a slide here that, that just shows a couple of the ways that you can separate ants from termites. Um, termites do not have clubbed or elbowed antennae. Ants have uh, at least elbowed antennae, often clubbed. Um, termites uh, have kind of a broad waist between the thorax and the abdomen, whereas ants uh, have a very thin or narrowed waist. And then... Uh, if wings are present in termites, the front and hind wings are of the same size, whereas in ants, the front wings are, are larger than the hind wings. So a quick pop quiz. What is this? Is it an ant or is it a termite? If you'll notice, this guy has straight antenna. There are no wings, so we can't make any statements about that. But there is a, also a very thick waist between the thorax and the abdomen. So that makes this a termite. How about this one? Note the thin waist and the elbowed antenna. Again, no wings here, uh, but so it's an ant. Here's a third one. This is actually a trick question. Um, I included this one because I wanted to make the point that everything that looks like an ant isn't necessarily an ant, or everything that looks like a termite isn't necessarily a termite. Um, this is actually a beetle, and if you note, know, there's an arrow there pointing to a pair of hardened wings, or, or elytra, 
uh, the, the four wings in this group, or Coleoptera, which we'll get to later, uh, are actually toughened. Uh, and they don't have any, any veins to them whatsoever. That's actually a pair of wings that you're looking at there. And that's a cue off that this is actually a beetle and not um, an ant or a termite. And there are a couple of other orthopteroid orders that are, that are less commonly encountered and that are, that are less diverse, um, but deserve to be brought up. So we'll go ahead and go through these three here, Phasmatodia, Grilloblatodia, and Mentophasmatodia. Um, the first of these orders is Phasmatodia, uh, or walking sticks. Um, these guys are long and slender, they have long slender limbs and bodies, um, and all of their North American taxa are actually wingless. They kind of come in two flavors, either as seen on top, very long and skinny, or as seen on bottom, kind of more pudgy. And then the other two, Grilloblatodia, or ice crawlers, and Mentophasmatodia, uh, gladiators, are, are, are kind of weird things that you don't often encounter. Grilloblatids are um, commonly found in Eastern Asia and Western North America, but they're only found in like glaciers and snow fields and ice caves. They're only found in these extreme environments. As a matter of fact, if you go and pick up a Grilloblatid, uh, they'll actually die from the heat of your hand. They're, they're extremophile. Uh, cold temperature specialists. Um, and they all pretty much look like the, the drawing here. Um, Mantophasmins are actually the most recently discovered order um, of insects. Um, and they're found only in the mountains of Namibia and South Africa and Tanzania. Uh, and, and were discovered in, in 2002 uh, from museum specimens, and then, then, I'm sorry, discovered earlier, 2001, from museum specimens, and then 2002, they actually found living um, members of this, this group. Um, recently, these two orders, or what formerly were orders, were actually lumped together into a single order, Order Notoptera, um, and this actually comprises, I guess you could say, the newest extant or, or living um, order of insects. Next, we'll forge forward to ring number six on this tree, uh, the group that is traditionally referred to as Plecopterida, a number of orders that have been lumped together historically. But again, the this particular tree is convenient to talk about some of these groupings, but isn't necessarily indicative of the true um, phylogeny of some of these things. So the first group we're going to talk about, the first order we're going to talk about in this group, uh, is Dermaptera, or earwigs. And earwigs, or, or Dermapterans, are, are characterized by typically two pairs of wings. Sometimes they're actually wingless. Uh, it's secondarily lost in a few groups. Uh, the front wings uh, are kind of leathery and short, um, a lot like in, in, in the beetles, uh, whereas the, the, the hind wings are, are, are folded underneath those and are, are more clear membrane and membranous. Um, they too have biting or chewing mouth parts. Uh, the thing that sets earwigs apart from a lot of other things that look like earwigs are the forcep-like cerci on the rear of the creature. Uh, if you recall from an earlier discussion, um, the order Diplura also has forcep-like cerci. Um, earwigs are a lot larger than Diplurans, um, and there, there are some other more minor um, morphological differences, uh, but, but earwigs are, are larger, uh, 12 to 30 millimeters in length, um, and then they too are hemimetabolous. Like the next order we're going to discuss is Plecoptera, or stoneflies. Stoneflies are dorsoventrally flattened, and they have chewing mouth parts, and possess two pairs of thin membranous wings. Their immatures are aquatic, and the adults often remain near water. Quite often they are associated with higher quality waterways and moving bodies of water such as streams. 
Uh, stoneflies possess two caudal filaments at their rears, unlike mayflies that have three, and unlike some of the similar looking groups that we'll talk about in later discussions that do not possess such filaments. They also are hemimetabolous. There are two remaining plecopterid orders that we'll talk about here, um, Imbiodina and Zoraptera. These are both smaller orders and are more uncommonly encountered than, than some of the ones that we've talked about before. The order Zoraptera, or angel insects, are found both wingless and winged forms. Uh, when wings are present, there are two pair. Uh, they're membranous and have very reduced uh, venation patterns, um, as, as seen in the picture here. Uh, the antennae are nine-segmented. The wingless forms actually lack eyes and a cell eye, whereas the winged forms have them. Um, and tarsi, or the, the very end segment of the legs, uh, are two-segmented. Um, their cerci, the, the filaments at the end of, of their abdomens, are, are short, and they have ten abdominal segments. These guys are found in soil and decaying vegetation, um, and are, are kind of rarely encountered. The last order we'll talk about in this video is Imbiodina, or web spinners. Web spinners can be winged or wingless, but they all look pretty similar to the image here. Um, they all tend to be kind of fuzzy and elongate. Uh, this order gains its common name from the expanded tarsal segments on their front legs, which actually contain silk-producing glands. They use these silk-producing glands to produce silk webs, hence the name web spinner. They use this webbing to produce silk tubes in which they live. Uh, sometimes they're referred to as galleries. and they, they, they live out a good portion of their lives within these galleries that sprawl across trees or rocks or other substrates.